Good. Oh, I'm sorry that it's been that kind of a morning for you. <laughs> Actually, because I've started this business with a friend, we um, and neither of us has done business development for like 15, 16 years. So we just did a course, little sort of mini web webinar course this morning. Oh, nice. Back to basics, how to sell in the modern world. Yeah, it's a it's very different, very complex to maybe what it was seven or eight years ago. I think a yeah. lot of tools to utilize and get comfortable with. <laughs> God, I need a haircut. Hair's everywhere. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right, wait for the edit, man. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the next installment of uh, the TA Job Market Review with me, Robert Nunn. And today, I'm joined by the brilliant Asal Al Magrabi. Welcome. Hi, Rob. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate you taking the time out to have a chat. Pleasure. So it's uh, it's our first trip across the water to Ireland, but can you give me a brief uh, overview of yourself and your career in TA to date? Absolutely. Um, so my background is predominantly TA for kind of the last five, six years uh, within the tech industry. I've had the fantastic opportunity over the years to work with some remarkable tech companies. So the likes of Indeed, um, Glassdoor, which is Indeed's sister company, and um, Meta. And then previous to that, I was on the agency side and I actually did sales as well. And as you know, agency is a nice hybrid of um, TA and sales kind of combined in business development. and. Uh, where I've kind of come from is being able to have the opportunity to source in Meta for really hard to fill roles, like within the Persian speaking MENA and CEE region. And then within Glassdoor, because they were a startup in EMEA, having the opportunity to build out teams. So building out like our SDR team across markets, our AE and SAE and account management teams, our sales operations teams, had the opportunity to build out the intern program for Glassdoor, sitting out of Dublin, which That's was true. absolutely fantastic given that I I'd lecture part time as well. Um, and then within Indeed, I took a slightly different route within TA and focused purely on internal recruiting. Started off managing uh, internal hiring within the EMEA and APAC region. And as our team grew, so did I. And I had the opportunity to continue to grow and ended up stepping into a team lead role managing four direct reports across the EMEA and APAC region for the internal hiring side of things within Indeed and really having an impact on the candidate experience and all of those roles and making sure that it was top class and not only that but also for our stakeholders as well making sure everybody was um, clued in, everybody knew the timelines, uh, working very closely with compensation HR to make sure that there was equity and transparency when it came to making offers for people moving internally, be it laterally or promotionally within Indeed. Um, and then obviously in the roles when I was hiring externally as well. So very nice kind of high level overview in terms of what I've done Brilliant. so far. Brilliant. So uh, obviously you're in Ireland. Um, yeah similar markets to the UK we can we can say but I mean what, what's your view of the world and the TA job market from from your point of view over there yeah I think I think that's a great question um this is my second time being made redundant the first mm -hmm. time was due to COVID and I think that was a very different type of redundancy that hit markets whether it was Dublin UK or at a global level versus what we kind of saw in the last 12 to 18 months um COVID hit everybody across all sectors, industries, roles and functions. This time I think is a little bit different. It's kind of predominantly hit the tech industry and maybe consultancy and financial services as well, and maybe small, medium sized enterprises. Um, I think TA is probably taking a completely different approach. Um, what happened was maybe over hiring in order to achieve very ambitious hiring goals. Mm -hmm. And that's why there were a lot of people within the TA space and tech. And now that there's, you know, uncertain markets or economies kind of coming our way, the first thing that gets cut tends to be recruitment and marketing, unfortunately, because that's where a lot of budget goes, but there's no return on investment coming off the back of those departments. And so what I'm starting to identify is a lot of roles are coming back up potentially and like there has been a shift. I've been off the market right. for five and a half months now. Certainly in Dublin, there are TA roles starting to come back up, but it's on a fixed term contract basis. And so I think it will be assignment specific that maybe we see hiring within the TA sector across uh, Dublin in the UK for the next little while. Um, but also I think the impact that redundancies can have on individuals I think it's something that maybe not a lot of people talk about or we don't see a lot of people talking about it and it's that emotional roller coaster that you go through and um, so 
I think the UK and Ireland are very similar. If you have a big group of people being made redundant by an organization, you have to go through a legal process. And so that can be a 30 day consultation process. And that's really rigorous. It's stressful, it's straining, it's the unknown, it's not knowing whether you're going to be impacted at the end of it or not. So you're kind of going through this roller coaster for those 30 days period, and then you get your outcome. And then from there, you're kind of figuring out what are you going to do with yourself? And some people are very lucky and can land something very quickly depending on you know what their specialty is, and that's fantastic. But for those of us, unfortunately, who have been impacted by redundancies um, across the tech industry, specifically within TA, I think the market is really hard right now. And there's thousands of us competing for the same yeah. role. Um, and like realistically, an organization is going to take somebody who has more experience if they're applying and willing to take a pay cut versus somebody who has the exact experience that the JD says. Um, but, you know, there are, you know, they have somebody more senior willing to take a pay cut. And yeah. with that, I think it is very competitive. I think it will continue to be competitive. But then what happens when you eventually land something seven or eight months out of being out of the market? It's like, again, that emotional roller coaster kicks in and you have the anxiety and the fear of starting in this new role, yeah. starting the position, <laughs> not knowing the unknown, I suppose. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there right now who are applying and applying and applying like myself. Yeah, It just seems like, unfortunately, there's been a dip on the candidate experience side of things. And realistically, it's probably because a lot of the TA functions have been let go. <laughs> so there's nobody there to manage that process. This is, a, this is a thing, isn't it? You know, it's... Absolutely. It's hard. And what happens when you're constantly putting in time to fill out these really long, lengthy job applications but you're not even getting an auto reject email. I think all of us at this stage, between me and like my peers who've all gone through this journey alongside me, um, we're all saying the same thing. Well, happily take an auto reject email over not hearing anything at all. You just cut <laughs> it off your list and move on. You're not there left ghosted. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And it's like just, you know, even if it takes you three weeks before you hit that auto reject, it'd be fantastic if you just do it because it lets us know, okay, this we can cross this off our Excel spreadsheet. That's not yeah. happening. It's not going to be fruitful. But just not even hearing back is a problem. Um, and I also think just the expectation as well that if you see somebody has been made redundant due to collective redundancy is you can just pick up the call and pick up the phone and ring them. And as, it, as great as it is to get that phone call, it's actually not setting people up for success by scheduling that pre-screen or even just calling to schedule that pre-screen initial step because no. people haven't done their homework, they haven't done their research and they haven't gotten into the headspace of actually being able to answer questions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I, when I was heavily in this with delivery recruitment, I would get CV phone, just phone off the bat rather mm -hmm. than scheduling a call. And, you know, I suppose if you're doing that over and over again, as a candidate, you do want that headspace. Ahead, yeah. of, ahead of time don't you absolutely and like there's people who could be doing school runs the grocery shop you yeah. know doing things you know that they need to do running in and out of appointments and so if you get a phone call and you're in the middle of driving to somewhere and you're trying to follow your maps and yeah you can ask to reschedule or for them to call you back the next day and try and schedule a time but then if the expectation is that you can take the call there and then the question raises itself that does that mean you're putting yourself at the bottom of the list of candidates that they're calling because you weren't readily available to take that phone call because you're competing against hundreds of applicants who've gone for the same role yeah interesting on, on your search then specifically how are you approaching that what's your tactics yeah i'm finding that direct applications are, are just they're not fruitful and um, the way to go is referrals and it's referrals of so leveraging so we were fantastic. I think I'm very blessed with the group of individuals who unfortunately were all let go and um, say as me from Indeed in the sense that we've all remained in contact. We all have a WhatsApp group. And so I think what a lot of us are doing now is before throwing in an application, we'll just go into that WhatsApp group and go, does anybody have a contact within this company? Yeah, yeah. And we're finding that we're all helping each other. We all want to help each other succeed. And so people are connecting you with people that maybe they know personally or they know somebody who knows somebody and you're getting that referral in from an employee who's within the organization and i found that any interviews that i've done with big multinational organizations for any type of ta role or global mobility role that i've gone for have more than likely come off the back of a referral who is currently an employee within the organization who can just kind of push and give a nudge for you to get that screening call rather than just applying, even though the job spec might fit exactly to your experience. 
I'm just not finding that to be yeah. fruitful anyway. And it's it's simply down to the amount of applicants that I'm sure everybody's competing against for the TA roles. No, for sure. We we you touched on candidate experience there. If you if you had an experience that's been good, I mean, ultimately you didn't get the job, but is one any yeah as a good uh, experience for you. I had an experience with a tech company and that was off the back of a refer two referrals. So one referred me in and then somebody who was in a senior position just kind of gave a little um, little recommendation to my profile of having worked with me personally in a previous company. And I really think that that helped to get that pre-screen call. Um, unfortunately though, I didn't have the exact experience because this would have been a standalone role with a lot of HR and kind of employment law involved as well right. as a hybrid with TA. But what I loved about that experience was I got the phone call very quickly or I got an email to schedule through Calendly the call with the recruiter for the pre-screen, which we did. And very quickly, you know, transparent, straight to the point, but in a very nice professional manner. And um, let me kind of down easily to be like, look, walk me through your experience. It's still great to connect, even though I don't think you've got the HR part that we're looking for. Let's stay in touch and we've remained in contact. And I think that in itself goes a long way and was a very positive experience versus maybe going through hoops and hoops um, for an organization, you know, and at the end of the day, the rejection was just an email after spending five and a half hours invested in an interview process. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But yeah. What, what, what do you think the future for TA? I Look think the mod, yeah, I think the model is changing i think it's already changed to be very honest and i really do think it'll be a rarity to see huge ta teams sitting in-house um certainly within the next year or two i think it's going to be a case of hiring ta people on contracts either directly as a fixed term contract or through an agency so payroll is running through a recruitment agency um for a specific period of time for specific assignments for hiring and once that is completed that's the end of the contract and you're back on the market again to look for the next company who's looking to hire a TA specialist for their hiring needs and that way I suppose it is saving costs if you look at it from a numbers perspective but also not only on remuneration from a base salary but also from the benefits side of things especially within tech where you know tech companies are known to give yeah. stocks if you're a full-time employee as well as all the other benefits if you have it running through an agency you don't have to give that and so that's money in an organization's pocket back again for sure so for final question as is tradition asked by um the previous guest yeah and it's it's a tricky one actually oh. <laughs> um, what to you is the most important aspect of recruitment oh that's a great question actually um i think not losing the human touch and the empathy piece of the process i think that's really important people are dealing with people and i think if you if you are warm as a ta partner if you're transparent and you're being a human on the other side of the phone and not treating a candidate like just a number potentially coming in to you know sit in a chair for a role that needs to be filled i think you get to build those relationships more and as people grow within their career they will come back to you no matter whether you're still in the organization or you've moved on and you maintain those relationships and i think that's ultimately in this day and age that can sometimes be the decision maker as to whether somebody takes your offer or not couldn't agree more. Excellent answer to a great question. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Asel, and uh, all the best with your onward search. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time, Rob. Thank you for having me. Take care.